Welcome to Primetime, bitch, and welcome to another episode of Kruger's Corner. I'm Mike Kruger, joined by producer Todd. Good evening. And we are going to be reviewing another couple of uh, Freddy's Nightmares episodes for you. Uh, tonight we'll be covering uh, episode 15 and 16 from season two. And we'll get right into episode 15, Prime Cut. And in this one, the wilderness holds horror for hunting buddies and a sexy guy. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, pretty simple little concept here. These got a bunch of hunting buddies go out. They meet this uh, just strange woman who starts sucking on one of their uh, wounds and <laughs> shit gets crazy from there. And man, I like this is definitely one I could say I enjoyed quite a bit mm, uh, out, out, out of all the non Freddy episodes of this season. I think this is probably my favorite. Um, I just, I, I like the setting of, you know, the, the, just all these guys in the middle of the wilderness, uh, you know, it reminds me of just campy slasher type shit that happens. And the way the uh, story plays out where this guy, basically this one guy is thinking that this chick is a vampire and he keeps having these nightmares that just go get crazier and crazier and crazier. And then eventually he wakes up and finds out, oh, she's not a fucking vampire. I've been tripping. Uh, my plane crashed with all my business buddies, <laughs> and now I'm gonna have to eat my friends uh, and survive and be, uh, you know, uh, have this can cannibalistic meals uh, to survive in the middle of the wilderness. And I, yeah, just a lot of fun. I've always liked that concept. Anytime I see it, uh, and we got you know some decent looking like you know dead bodies, and we got this nice. Uh, skinned a live body that they were eating and shit that looked really cool i also liked how in the second half of the episode um the, the wife comes into play and the way that she like she's just nagging on this dude why he's been you know lost for the last couple of weeks and in, in the middle of nowhere with his you know plane crashed down he's been eating his buddies and sleeping with this chick and now his nagging woman comes around and he almost doesn't want to be saved uh, i thought that was pretty funny i also laughed when uh when she's like bragging about how she slept with one of his uh co-workers and then basically he's like well i just ate him so <laughs> that was just a funny little ironic thing and the way she got super freaked out about it <laughs> uh the ending could have been a little bit better though uh, i would have preferred you know it just to have something a little bit stronger but outside of that this was uh, this was a lot of fun uh we got vampires cannibalism fucking uh what's not to love there uh skin bodies i mean it it, it had everything that uh you know i like so uh what about you tell you think of this one yeah, I, I did like this, and this is one I, like I remember watching this, but I haven't seen this since probably the original run. Um, so the fact that I remembered it was like was nice. So it it, it is still a fun one. Like the setup, the situation, um, it, it's perfect for the the one hour format. Like they did it. Um, Sandal Bergman, she's she was the tracker. She's most notably known from the Conan movies, Red Sonia, mm -hmm. Hell Comes to Frogtown, and a bunch of sword and sandal movies like She and and stuff. So, I mean, it was good to see her uh, in a, I guess, more of a traditional role. I'm used to her with a sword and some other shit. Yeah, I, mean, well, I, th I thought it was cool, too, how, like, she was a vampire, you know, in the, or, like, we got all these cool little vampire scenarios. But then, you know, it, it's still continuing the story, but it, we got two completely different things going on with her character which was nice yeah. to see her range yeah oh and this one was directed by david calloway which doesn't really have any you know any other to, credits to his is name he related directing? to mean mark <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure if he is um maybe he's the other skyscraper um directing wise he's got two episodes of this 10, 10 episodes of dark justice which i don't remember from 91 and then she spies, which I have no idea what that was from 2003. So <coughs> well, he did, he did for Freddy's Nightmares director, he's did some of the better than some of the names, but it was also probably the material he was given to work with. Some of them are battling uphill. 
one thing I'll say too about this episode is like the Freddy segments usually are my saving grace. And in this one, like, even though they weren't strong, like I wasn't that upset about it just because I had so much fun with the story. Todd, you watched Yellow Jackets, right? No, I, I haven't got to that. Oh, you, similar so, premise, though. Yeah, there's a similar premise, you know, like weird, uh, you know, this plane crashing in the middle of the wilderness and uh, friends having to survive and, you know, do unspeakable things to each other. Like, it, it, it was just reminding me of that, and I had just such a goddamn good time watching that show recently. So this was definitely the right vibe uh, for me. And Saving Grace, I mean, outside of these Freddy episodes, this second season is been pretty fucking trash there's been like <laughs> one or two that have been just like you know decent enough to where i don't want to rip my eyeballs out but <laughs> there's there's been some stinkers like season one over to all fucking day even though i'll say like the freddy segments in season two some of them are very very close to season one uh, but no but, top DJ Freddy. Yeah. <laughs> Rap Master Freddy. Rapmaster nothing. Freddy. I, I mean, Freddy fucking rolling dice in the hood was pretty close, but mm, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Rap Master Freddy. Nothing's going to beat that. And in this, he was, he wasn't doing much in this one. He was just eating fucking some meat, <laughs> some people. Uh, all right. So why don't we rate this one and then move on to the next? So uh, this one's going to get a three and a half out of five for me which is uh, pretty high. One of my highest ratings of this season so far. Yeah, I I'm with you on this, and I'm a three and a half also. All right. So uh, Almost now, was a four. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that, that that's the one thing. This has been the closest to a four, too. That hasn't been a Freddy episode for me. Uh, but I think if it just would have stuck the landing a little bit better, like maybe instead of having the wife live after she fucking – that by the way that was the dumbest fucking shit ever the way that she tied herself to just like this random bag like the, she was gonna be able to fucking bungee jump down the fucking cliff and then she goes flying maybe if she would have gotten paled like the other two guys i i would have <laughs> went higher uh because she was a fucking annoying bitch goddamn um <laughs> moving on though now to episode 16 interior loft in this one, a frustrated artist plans his demise, and then a couple headed for doom when they start a telephone fantasy business. So, uh, yeah, this is just a super sleazy one, uh, which you know nothing wrong with that, uh, but it did it like its sleaziness was definitely what it had going for it, uh, the strongest. Uh, I did kind of understand. The couple, though, with the whole sex line thing. I mean, if I was broke as shit, my girl was cool with it. I mean, that's I guess that's that's the modern equivalent to OnlyFans. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's but the sex line shit's a way better deal than OnlyFans. I mean, with OnlyFans, <laughs> you gotta at least spread your cheeks a little bit. <laughs> Fucking the sex line stuff, you could say whatever the fuck you want. I mean, fuck, I could have did that shit. For, if that shit was still around, I'd probably do that shit to make money, even though it'd probably be some like nasty ass motherfuckers on the other line. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna hear Caesar Carr. You're gonna hear Caesar. Here's somebody you recognize me like, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean that 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 was yeah, wearing my head. <laughs> um I did like though uh how the wife, you know, once she started doing the uh sex line stuff, uh she started to kind of get haunted by this paranoia about you know one of the haunt uh one of the callers finding her. And you know, trying to struggle, snuggle her ass, and ends up being one of the cops. Uh, like that, that 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 was pretty cool to watch that play out. Um, the part where the husband though jumps through the glass window and karate chops the fucking rapist, <laughs> and he karate chop like dude, he, he pops out the fucking glass ceiling, comes down. Goes wah, 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 karate chops this fucker and he falls in the glass and slits his throat. And like I was sitting there and you know it's I watch these late at night and fucking stoned out of my mind usually. I'm like, wait a minute, I gotta go back. Did I just see that shit right? This fucker <laughs> jumped down from the glass ceiling, karate chopped him into the fucking broken glass and slit his throat. All right, I guess that's what we're going with. Um 
So, yeah, that, I mean, that first half, definitely pretty strong. Uh, I also like that the uh, Freddy in the police uniform slid in some other th- dude's throat uh, in, you know, the little in-between credit things uh, after he's beating this dude's ass with a nightstick. That was, that, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but the second half of the story, I don't know. It, it was just – it was kind of weird to me because, like, we were thrown in. She's the sex worker. Uh, you know, and then she's not, and she's this writer, and uh, it, like she's, I guess, kind of going crazy or something like that. The way the second half played out, just it, it seemed very weird, uh, especially you know, having like maybe if the second half, like if they were switched around, it, it would have worked better for me, but I, I don't know, it just it, it, it didn't feel like it flowed with the first part of the episode and if it would have just been different characters maybe it wouldn't have been so weird to me uh but using the same characters and kind of continuing on with their story the direction they took just yeah it it didn't too much of a left turn it doesn't make sense yeah it didn't fit um which uh, was unfortunate uh especially considering i liked the first half so much but uh yeah what about you tub uh, I'm with you. The first half solid. The second half, it's kind of yeah. Uh, again, uh, not new to this series. It happens quite a bit. Yeah. Um, this is another Ken Wiederhorn episode. So this is uh, his fifth or sixth at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing really to add. I mean, which said like the second half. If it was a different character, and we just kind of still stay, it's just hard because it's like going backwards. Like, well, yeah. I, I, I get what you yeah. mean. They were flipped. You well, it, well, and she was already established like a certain way, and then we found out. Oh, well, that actually never happened, and she's almost a completely different fucking character. Like they should have just had it branch off with you know a different couple if they needed to or something like that. And it wouldn't be the first time they've done that because we'll get a character we saw for like three seconds, and then they'll yeah. continue the next into the second story yeah i don't know why why the formula has changed so much in season two because like season one it was almost every episode had two separate segments and and now it's like they try to continue on with the story but then it just takes such a weird left turn that it doesn't fit at all but you know what our next episode is oh boy well you know we just watched interior loft our next episode is is interior loft later what the fuck <laughs> so now it's gonna probably be more shit that doesn't fit with the fucking with the sex lines i don't story. know if i should have warned you just let you discover it on your own do you know you would have been like motherfucker <laughs> Dude, i mean uh, pro- probably better that you warned me now so because i'm not just gonna turn it off as soon as i pop it on um yeah definitely not you know not my favorite uh second half but at least the first was stronger maybe if in this in this continuation if we get more sex worker stuff i'll be interested uh but other than that uh why don't we rate this one and get the hell out of here we're almost done with these all these episodes you know we only have six more six more so um uh, lucky number six so three more episodes of these and uh, we'll be off to that final uh, big finale show that we've been talking about. So, uh, all right, let's rate this one. Uh, for me, I'm a two and a half out of five. I could go a little bit higher, but I, just that second half. I mean, it, uh, even if I wanted to rewatch this episode, I, that second half is still going to bother the shit out of me. So two and a half out of five. I'm three, and that's the sleaze factor. I mean, it's not sleazy enough to work at Disneyland, but it's close. (laughs) Good reference. (laughs) Shout out out if you get that one. Um, Uh, All right, so, uh, well, before we dick flip out of here, um, (laughs) like, share, subscribe, uh, follow us on all the social medias, uh, follow our Discord, also, patreon.com slash flesh wound features starts at just a buck. Exclusive, early, and uncensored co- content. Post shows that you won't see anywhere else every Wednesday live after our normal Wednesday show. So come hang out with us there. And uh, we appreciate it. So uh, other than that, I think that's all I got. Sweet dreams, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs>